This is a story of how we went to the biggest city in Africa and teamed up with a local entrepreneur to help create a local circular economy for plastic waste in Lagos, Nigeria. But it wasn't that easy. Lagos is massive. It has over 20 million people in the metro area with 10,000 people moving into the city every day. This leads to a lot of infrastructure problems. Stuck in traffic again. <laughs> Rough roads, poor planning, and you guessed it, plastic waste everywhere. Honestly, it is shocking. Meet Victor. He is part of a new generation of young entrepreneurs trying to change the situation in Lagos by starting up recycling businesses. And he is hustling all the time. We've, 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 we've not done anything 24 hours. Call your people for everything I want. No time. It's best to just give me the best price. It never stops. But I mean, I do too many things on the road, the streets. Stop the recording. Our biggest challenge that we see is the level of incentive that is provided to individuals on you know, recycling. There is not enough awareness or motivation for people to actually consider recycling. So you might be thinking, why is it that there's plastic waste everywhere where you can actually collect and sell this stuff? I mean, these guys are buying. Well, most of the plastic waste that gets collected in Lagos is shipped overseas to be processed into new products, only to be re-imported into Nigeria. Moving all that plastic and products around the world is expensive and makes it hard for recycled plastic products to compete. That's where we come in. But they said we had to go to a Nigerian wedding. <laughs> if we can shorten this supply chain by using small-scale recycling machines to make products locally, we can cut out the middleman and make recycled plastic more valuable. And then we have a circular economy because once it's manufactured into new products or to same products, it gets back to the consumer. It can be used again. And then we rather than take, make and dump, now we take, make, reuse, recover and recycle, so it goes on like that. And that will give people more incentives to start collecting it. When people start to see that this can turn into this, and they know that if I do this, I get this with the plastic and recycling, they will do more of it, and they'll start to tell people to do the same thing as well. We want to do this by using plastic waste collected in Lagos to create circular building materials for the construction and furniture industry. This came with a whole bunch of challenges. So we're, right now we're kind of unpacking the machines, checking everything went well with the shipping. And everything looks pretty good. Uh, it went far away, so that's, that's good that it ended up just fine. Okay, so here is the space. Like at the moment you have a wall here. Okay. So we're gonna break the wall. So you're gonna break this one. I think it's going good. Uh, you know, it's always a few things to take care of in terms of getting setting up. Um, but we're happy with how things are going so far. And we're excited to kind of get the machines in tomorrow. Hopefully, tomorrow, yeah. hopefully uh, up and running soon then. We move it flat? Okay, move it flat. I think I need a shower. You look so destroyed. <laughs> yeah, what we realized is that there is no three-phase power coming to the house. So we thought at the beginning that there, there was three phase in this house, but that's not the case. Thankfully, the, as the electricity is not very stable here, they also plan to have a generator, which anyway is gonna bring three phase to the place. It's not ideal that you have a generator running every time. Like, it, like you can even like calculate if it's really productive in that case, because you're burning oil to melt plastic. So yeah, I, I don't know, but that's more subjective, I would say. But anyway, this place is kind of temporary for them as well, that they don't plan to stay more than a year or something like that here. And then that's gonna make them starting and it's not ideal 
situation and then they're gonna move in a in a proper industrial place anyway i'm worried that we're gonna run out of time to be able to start powering the machines train uh, the juba folks on how to use the machines before we're supposed to go back on friday or on saturday so it's uh cutting a little bit close <laughs> Today, I'm gonna yeah, run through two sort of presentations. First one to kind of give you some context about what precious plastic is and kind of our strategy and kind of how we differ from the traditional recycling industry. Uh, and then second, I'm gonna do some uh, presentation on plastics in general. So if one know whether the plastic na pet or not be pet, you get one number with the Honda. You need to connect the motor to the rest of the shredder and this is happening behind this cover. This is open, boom, it stops. But to be clear, tomorrow we have a presentation and we don't have nothing to present. We just went to college. <laughs> Last day to do it. Getting it rented a generator. This should be it. It's our last chance. Shredding, baby. We're shredding. We're shredding. After an intense two weeks with tons of ups and downs, with only two hours left before the event to present our work, Victor and his team produced the first recycled plastic sheet in Lagos, Nigeria. It all came together as we presented the first sheets to a group of local business owners interested in using this material to close the loop for plastic in Lagos. Victor is now equipped with the machines and the knowledge to recycle Lagos' plastic waste into new local products. If you too want to start to recycle plastic, Go to preciousplastic.com and find out how to start a recycling business and create a circular economy in your community. <laughs>